dear student those who have a subject of analysis they are a little bit like a doctor why because if you move to the doctor for any diagnosis then there are different different instrument like ecg to the echo blood pressure checking and from that a doctor come to the conclusions what would be the disease to this patient the similar way uh, if we know the all the spectroscopy theoretical portion but if we don't know the exact a uh, practical part or to determine the uh, structure from the spectra then it is useless for us but to understand that i have tried to continue with a combined spectra analysis in a systematic way so to understand that we move that we have something in this box what is in this box we don't know but it is some organic compound that we know so we have question what is there what is there what is there what is there we don't know we have to move somewhere near to nmr mass ir and ue so here i have tried a uh, systemize the way to understand this uh, uh, understand the analysis or to analyze the uh, spectra of a uh, different different spectroscopy the first one is to determine the molecular mass from this mass spectrum that is m plus signal so m plus signal is give you what it will give us a uh, mass then we have relative number of protons so from this anima you have to understand only relative number of proton suppose we have such a signal but dear student you must have to know a basics of nmr mass ir and uv that and then you can understand this lecture so this pattern shows that the nearby hydro nearby carbon has three hydrogen and this shows that nearby hydrogen is uh, two hydrogens nearby carbon has two hydrogens that we can understand that we will see in detail with our lectures on coming video determine a number of carbon a number of carbon it give this cmr so we can say that a mass spectroscopy is a 2d echo for us to understand the structure nmr is a we have ecg of uh, organic compounds and to come there we have quaternary carbon methene methylene and methane carbon so if the carbon has if it is like this then this is quaternary carbon if we have a carb this then it is methane carbon if we have a like this then it is methylene carbon and if we have a this one then we can say it is a methyl carbon so of the compound containing quaternary carbon it containing methane carbon it containing methylene carbon or methyl carbon that we come from the conclusion from the cmr after getting a tudico ecg and cmr we have some additional data if we have if it is given then we have to uh, understand that if it is not given then there is no problem so what are the additional data determine the molecular formula if the molecular formula is directly given then there is no problem is only mass is given from the mass based on a 13 rules that also we will see in our coming video so 13 rules will help us to determine the molecular mass from the molecular formula the degree of unsaturation is also an important part for us so what degree of unsaturation will give us an idea it gives idea about a number of uh, pi bonds plus a number of ring in an organic compound so that but we are going to understand or to determine the structure of organic compound then if we don't know then how can we come to the conclusion that uh, how many double bonds are there how many rings are there there is one formula that also we will see in our coming video 
So determine the molar absorbance. UV is a little bit helpful us. If it is given, then it's okay. If it is not given, then also there is no problem. But you must have to know this NMR, sorry, mass, NMR and CMR. Without that, it is next to impossible. Third, this is a spectroscopy. Spectroscopy have uh, a three or four, we can say, measure. One is NMR, mass, IR and UV. It is further bifurcated into or NMR will give the idea of what? It will give the idea about CH3. It will give the CH3, CH2, CX. And I have written the idea of the exchangeable proton. So CH3, we are getting one signal. If it is CH3, CH2, then we are getting a signal like this. Uh, this is intensity and pattern is also important. That will I will tell you. Then exchangeable proton. What is an exchangeable proton? Exchangeable protons are the proton which is present on NH2 and OH. This I will tell you a direct. But basically, exchangeable protons are a, a acidic proton. Now the next question is what is acidic proton? Acidic protons are those which is, comes on a electronegative element, FCl, Br, and I after this oxygen nitrogen and sulfur so if uh, a hydrogen a proton is present on fluorine proton is present in oxygen proton is present in chlorine proton is present in nitrogen bromine sulfur or aldine then they are uh, acidic proton and they are exchangeable but most of our compound we will do the practice they have an nh2 and oh so we remember that nh2 and oh most of that mass in case of mass this fragment is very important for us because this is plus we have to put i forgot to put here and this is this mass has 91 signal in your mass if the signal is 91 be happy there is always presence of uh, aromatic or benzylic protons <coughs> ch3 have a mass 15 ch3 co has mass 43 these are the one of the most important uh, signal we can say in mass. IR help gal first to determine this carbonyl group, then hydroxyl group, amines group, and HSP hybridizations. Carbonyl group is near by 1700 centimeter inverse. This is uh, near to 330 centimeter inverse. Then SP hybridization is around about 2200 centimeter inverse. Now uh, this is very approximate, very approximate. Because we have all the spectra or spectroscopy, so we have to take the decision combined. If UV is just uh, given, then we are happy. If it is not given, then also we are happy. Move to add, continue. After getting the uh, fragment, you write down all the structure or a structural elements which are present to determine some are whatever you are getting. So are the monofunctional. Monofunctional are we can say they are terminal at the last, at the last, at the last. Bifunctional are uh, by uh, they are connected via two way like this. This this is bifunctional. Most of the trifunctional, you are getting a monofunctional, bifunctional, and trifunctional. Continue with it. End of all, we have to we are getting uh, some fraction. Now we have to play the game. What is that game? You have to connect all the fragment. After connecting the fragment, if you are get a molecular formula same as or you are getting a same mass. If you are getting that, then it is good. If you are not getting, suppose your compound mass is 100 and you get 84. What is the gap? 16. So you come to the conclusion that there would be a chances of oxygen. Oxygen is present there. If we can come to the conclusion. So in that way, you have to take some trial also like that. <coughs> so difference will give some idea for undetermined structure. Try to assemble the, all the structural element. After uh, assemble all the structural element, we, we are getting a uh, from the structural element, we are getting uh, different ways of fitting. So how to fit it? Suppose we have CH3, CH2. They have also uh, 
we can say CH2, CH2. It is one of the example. They have a four proton, and all the four protons are similar. Then we are getting one signal, and there is no splitting. But if we have CH3, CH2, this is also CH2. Then with the what is the environment to understand that we have to see the splitting patterns of NMR. Then and then we can understand. So that also we will see in our coming video. Spin spin coupling data or informations about conjugations may be able to you make a definite choice for possibilities. So to understand the environment of a proton nearby carbon, we must have to understand the uh, a splitting pattern. Is it? After assembling all, this is very most important. If you are getting uh, everything is okay, you are getting a mass, you are getting the molecular formula, you are getting the structure, but you must have to return on CMR, you have to return on 2D co, you have to return, uh, 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 sorry, this is 2D co and the ECG and confirm not all the data, but you must have to confirm or rationalize the major features of your structure. If a major features is not matching, then you have to think. Suppose I will give you an example. We have CH3CO, O, CH2 and CH3. This is one of the compound we have. Then another compound is CH3, CH2, CO, O, CH. Now do you observe it. After observing, you come to the conclusion that both have almost same UV, almost same IR, almost same NMR, then you must have to move to the mass. Mass will give some idea regarding this fragmentation pattern. That also we will see in the video. So after that, you ensure that no structural feature, there is no any structural feature which is very important that are inconsistent with your proposed structure. So important facts of NMR. So here, so many, uh, so many uh, data is given. Not all the data is uh, required to remember. So we have to remember this one is alkane. Then we have uh, alkyne. Then we have uh, olefinic that is alkene. Then we have uh, uh, this is uh, a variable or exchangeable protons, amines and alcohol. This is very important for us because if aromatic compound is there, then 91 fragment in mass. But what about this? It has 6.5 to 8 aromatic value. If it is there, so when we will see the NMR, we have to see the delta value whether near to 6.5 and 8. And we will see the mass. Then we always concentrate at 91 is there. And this two fragment. This fragment you must have to remember. After that, remaining you can support the chart also. But if you know all this data, then it is very important. Or it will help us. So this is a, some fact we have to remember. Not That is not that much difficult also. You can cut it. Next to that, pattern of NMR. Here this pattern is very important. So based on binomial theorem, we have uh, NMR, a signal would be like this. signal would be like this if this one signal this is a proportion is one two signal a same proportion if there is four signal the peripheral intensity is one and the middle one intensity is a uh, three then it is one is to four is to four now this important thing is here this is ch2 and this is ch3 the ch2 is splitted by ch3 in n plus 1. So it will give the 4 signal. The 4 signal is here. The CH2 is splitted by CH3. It will give a N plus 1. And it is give us a this way. That will help us. Similar way we have this is CH3. This is CH. The so CH is splitted by CH3. N plus 1. We are getting 2 signal. This one is this. And CH is splitted by CH3 and we are getting N plus 1. That is, that is will give us idea regarding the N plus 1. 
or uh, it is uh, it is uh, four signal or quartet we are getting so pattern is also one of the important role for us so we may say that patterns of cmr suppose we have uh, this carbon this is a no hydrogen coupled this is this one then come to this one and we comes to the here so in case of cmr a uh, splitting is not by the neighboring carbon but here a splitting by their own hydrogen there is no hydrogen so only singlet we are getting for this carbon not for this sorry this carbon there is one hydrogen so n plus 1 we are getting a 2 for one hydrogen n plus 2 we are getting a 3 n plus 1 sorry this is also give n plus 1 we are getting a quartet so 1 2 3 and 4 so please remember in case of hydrogen a peripheral hydrogen sorry in case of hydrogen a neighboring hydrogen is doing splitting in case of cmr their own carbons own hydrogen give the splitting okay we move and we will see this as an example we have one example of a ch3 ch2 ch3 ch2 oh now if we see there is three nmr signal one for ch3 another one for ch2 and oh If we will see a delta value, we have seen that the CS3 is near to zero point something, uh, near by zero. But here, the electronegative element increase a delta value, increase a delta value. How and how to know the electronegativity? I have told you some electronegativity. Here I will also give one uh, uh, another one important carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So here. if fluorine sp3 is more electronegative then oxygen sp3 then uh, carbon sp then uh, we have a nitrogen sp3 then we have carbon sp2 and the last that is carbon sp3 that we will give as a uh, idea electronegativity what is this series is nothing but electronegativity that will help us to understand it so my conclusion is this ch2 have more delta value compared to ch3 because it is nearby this electronegative element so this is a ch2 this is a ch3 second thing ch3 is a ch3 is splitted by CH3 is splitted by CH2 and CH2 is splitted by CH3. So, so this is a uh, this is CH3 and splitted by n plus one. So we are getting a three signal. A uh, signal intensity is also like uh, we can say one is two, uh, two is two. Ah, uh, see, we can see that this is one, this is two, and this is one also. Okay. so that also will help us to understand this uh, concept for this nmr or the combined spectra then what about this one this is ch3 this is oh that is singlet second thing is that a uh, near to the oh ch2 is there so you it should give a signal in the quartet but i have told you that this oh is exchangeable proton so it is not there it is continuously moving if it is continuously moving it has also uh, no coupling so this is some spectra related to ethanol we come here this is how many signals we are getting for this one is we are getting almost uh, uh, how many signal 1 2 3 and 4 signal we are getting one for this one second one is this one third one is this and fourth one is this one from that if you will see this is electronegative element 
Electronegative element is Hb and Ha. So it is very clear Hb and Ha has more delta value compared to Hc and Hd. Hd is far away from this electronegative element. So it has a less delta value. So this is Hd. Now we have some confusion whether Ha is delta value is high or Hb delta value is high. So in that case, we can see the fragmentation patterns. It has singlet. So this is singlet. It has a Hb that is a triplet. Now what about Hc? Hc we are getting a signal like this. In case of Hc, these are two protons nearby. They have three proton. Total is five proton. So five plus one. We are getting a 6 proton and this will give a sextet. So sextet is here and that will be help us. So in that way we can understand this NMR spectroscopy. Another most important we have the structure is this is a electronegative element. This is also an electronegative element by inductive effect. So this is a sp2. You can say sp2 carbon. This is carbon, sorry, oxygen sp3. So if you see that, and I have told you in the last slide, sp3 hydro oxygen has more electronegativity. So the delta value of this is high compared to this one. So both are nearby the electronegative element, but, but the electronegativity of oxygen is somewhat more. So delta value of CS3 in a pink color is high. And there is no splitting. From here, we will see that how many signals we are getting. We are getting one signal for this one, one for this one, another one for this one, and one more signal for this one. So, it is very clear it is aldehydic protons and aldehydic proton has delta value more than uh, 9. This is aromatic proton. Aromatic proton has delta value near to 8 and 9. What about this two? Among these two, these are in resonance, double, single, double, and this is electron withdrawing group. So it has, uh, uh, this is also electro near to electronegative element. This is also electronegative element. They have almost near delta value, but then you have to understand a splitting pattern. It is splitted by this two, this hydrogen and this hydrogen. So first it is split in the doublet and further it is splitted by this hydrogen doublet. It is further splitted by this hydrogen. So it is doublet of doublet. So doublet of doublet, it is available in the form of quadrate for signal. But we have to understand the pattern. If the pattern is like this, then we can say this is due to CH3. That has also 1, 2, 3 and 4. And it has also 1, 2, 3 and 4. They are almost same. 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. This is 1 is to 3 is to based on binomial theorem. So that will also help us. And this is uh, splitted by only this green color hydrogen is splitted by only this hydrogen. So it will give the doublet. So this will give uh, uh, this way we can understand also delta value predictions. So this is shows that uh, these are the almost same. So this is doublet of doublet. This is due to uh, splitting due to CH3. Right, so that will help us. They have the same J value, they have a different J value. Move to the head. Here we have to understand is suppose this is a sex state, so there is signal 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the triplet of doublet has also 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So based, this is based on the binomial, binomial theorem uh, fragmentation. So it is based on 1 is to uh, 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. So if it is a base like that, then we can say, so pattern is also important. That pattern also we learn in this example. We will continue with that. So this is one of the example. How many signals we are getting here? Here we are getting a, one signal is for this one. We are getting a two signal, one for HA and another one for HB. One signal we are getting for the HC also. Then we are getting for a HD, which is singlet. HC is singlet. So it is very simple. This is this one. This two are aromatic. 
they are near to this this is a quadrate so we moved here and this is a triplet we come also conclusion then what about this this is nothing but we can say it is a tms so this is a reverse we have seen but we have to move in which day from the ecg to the diagnosis we have to move from the spectra to the structure that also we will do in a uh, example this is same thing what i have explained you it is given it here which has delta values more okay now come to the conclusion from this coupling constant so here the coupling constant is gives some idea regarding to the uh, regarding the uh, whether we have cis and trans isomer whether we have uh, anti or gauge whether we have orthomata and para that will vicinal has more delta value it is written here vicinal is j3 if it is written then we can say j3 is nothing but it is like this between this two three hydrogen and it is jh then we can say this is between these two one and two bond this is one two and three bond so this is due to that it is written this is j2 and it is written here j3 and the delta value of vicinal is high because a dihedral angle theta is near to 90 then it has a low j value and if its theta is near to 0 and 180 then it has a higher delta value we can say a dihedral angle in case of this vicinal vicinal has vicinal has a delta values this is near to 0 to 16 this is tan and uh, 16 so that will help us then unsaturated in olefanic compound we have cis and trans among that a trans has somewhat more delta value that is comes under the later on uh, due to that uh, we have to suppose delta value of trans is somewhat more because they can interact little bit on the uh, in opposite uh, orbitals also long range coupling they have also list orthomata para ortho meta para ortho has higher delta value and para has lowest delta value we can say that uh, in that way also we can understand uh, delta has uh, ortho hydrogen is uh, para hydrogen is here there is less chances of uh, interactions we can say that also so this almost we have comes to the nmr we will continue in uh, understanding the combined spectra this is a first attempt of my to understand a spectroscopy in a systematic way to understand or identify this structure hope you enjoy and continue and subscribe my channel so you can get such a video thank you